If you got a tower PC like me, then you should be familiar with the concept of keeping the components cool through an airflow in order to guarantee optimal working conditions. But if you overclock your components and stress test them, then the temperatures will climb up quite a bit. For overclocking enthusiasts, that means it is time to crack open a new bottle of canola oil, fill up a container with it and completely submerge all heat producing components in it. Now of course I'm half joking here, because true overclocking enthusiasts would do oil cooling more professional. But nevertheless does oil feature some interesting properties when it comes to interacting with voltage potentials and of course electronics. So just like in a previous video, in which I had a closer look at how tap water and distilled water collude with electronics, I will perform a couple of experiments in this video to find out whether oil and electronics are actually best buds. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, which offers the most economic PCB service. But even though their prices are low, they still deliver high quality PCBs. So feel free to upload your Gerber files for file review before completely submitting your order. For my unfunny opening joke, I utilize canola oil which, without any further experiments, already has one big disadvantage. After using it for a longer time, it starts to get rancid, which means it stinks, besides a couple of other negative side effects. The reason is that the fats of the oil decompose through oxidation with the air and a few other processes, which more or less makes it unusable for long time applications, as well as our experiments. But thankfully though, there exist more specialized types of oil, like this Transformatorenöl, which basically translates out to transformer oil. Not only is it conform with a couple of important guidelines, but its German description text also sounds promising, which in a nutshell states that it prevents arcing, so it electrically isolates, extinguishes electric arcs, offers a good cooling capacity and a high oxidation resistance, which is the big problem that comes with every cooking oil. Now I cannot properly test the extinguishing of electric arcs, but the other two properties we can certainly test. So I filled up a container with the oil and noticed immediately that it is a pretty clear substance, that features a viscosity closer to water than cooking oil. But nevertheless, for starters, I used a low 15 volt DC voltage to see how much current would flow through the oil depending on what distance lies between the two voltage potentials. I then repeated the same test with mains AC voltage and the results were even better than I anticipated. With the DC voltage, no matter how close I got the probes to one another, the current flow was always beneath 0.0, .0 microamps. And with the AC voltage, I got a current flow of 2 microamps at an approximate distance of 1 cm. That equals a resistance of 115 mega ohms per centimeter. As a comparison, I previously measured a resistance of 300 ohm per centimeter for tap water and a resistance of 30 kilo ohm per centimeter for impure distilled water. But to be more scientific, the datasheet of the oil claims a dielectric strength of 30 kV per millimeter, while for example dry air features a dielectric strength of 3 kV per millimeter. So while my arc lighter here only requires around 15 kV to jump its 5 mm gap in air, it would require around 150 kV to create the same arc in oil. That also means that no matter what kind of electronic circuits, big or small, I submerge in the oil, it will in 99% of the cases function without a problem. You could even program a microcontroller in it. The resistance of the oil is just too big to influence the circuit negatively, 
which means the electrical isolating properties of the oil are correct. And by the way, while submerging probes, as well as electronics, they did not perform a visible chemical reaction with the oil, like for example water would do, which is an important characteristic of the oil as well. But anyway, moving on to the heat dissipation test, for which I got myself this beefy 4.7 ohm 100 watt resistor, to whose surface I secured a temperature probe with Kapton tape. During the experiment, I will dissipate a constant power of around 25 watts through the resistor, which will obviously heat it up. I will compare what kind of surrounding material, which includes air, distilled water and obviously our transformer oil, will keep the resistor the coolest during a time period of 10 minutes. So I started the experiment with oil and the resistor at a starting temperature of 23 degrees Celsius, which I tried to keep constant for the other materials. I wrote down the temperature for every passing minute, but unfortunately at minute 7 with a temperature of 46.8 degrees Celsius, the temperature probe got loose, but I think 7 minutes are also enough for an acceptable comparison experiment. So after a small cleaning and cooldown session, I once again added the temperature probe to the resistor and repeated the same experiment with distilled water, which gave me an end temperature of 35.3 degrees Celsius. Finally, I conducted the same test with air as the surrounding material, which like I initially expected, performed the worst with an end temperature of around 80 degrees Celsius after only 6 minutes. Now the results clearly showcase that water performs the best, then the oil and finally the air, which is honestly not a surprise since their specific heat capacity features clear increments from the best to worst material. And just in case you don't know, the specific heat capacity describes how much energy is necessary to heat up 1 kg of a material by 1 Kelvin. But even though the transformer oil is not the winner of this experiment, it is clear that in combination with its other properties, like the long term usage and electrical isolation, that it is suitable to for example submerge big high power transformers in it which not surprisingly is where this oil got its name from. But feel free to have a look at the datasheet of the oil to learn even more about it. And with that being said, you should now understand why oil and electronics can actually sometimes be best friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.